Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I think as we're all aware, President Biden has uh, decided to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan in September. Now, some agree with his decisions, decisions, some disagree with his decision. The bill that I'm about to talk about has nothing to do with the merits of his decision. Um, there are about 18,000, not 1,800, 18,000 interpreters and members of their immediate family who helped our troops fight the war in Afghanistan against the Taliban and against ISIS. Uh, they are at risk. There was an article uh, in a leading newspaper, Mr. President, yesterday. I'll read you the headline. It says, Afghan government could collapse six months after U.S. withdrawal. Um, these 18,000 interpreters and their immediate families who have helped American troops would like to get out. We have a visa process which is going very, very slowly. We will not be able to get all of those 18,000 human beings out uh, before the withdrawal in September. That much is clear. Again, my bill has nothing to do with the merits or lack thereof of the war. My, my bill would direct the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State to develop a plan to relocate the Afghan interpreters and their immediate families that want to get out and bring them to America. Now, obviously, before we bring them to America, those that want to come, we have to vet them. That's part of the problem. Uh, the, the vetting process right now is very slow. Rather than try to put together a bill that would set forth a specific plan to address this, this I consider it a crisis, if you're one of those 18,000 human beings, my bill would just direct the, the Defense Department and the State Department to come up with a plan to present to us within 30 days. Now, my guess, and it's only a guess, is that the state, state and defense are going to come up with some plan to move those of the 18,000 who want to leave Afghanistan to a safe uh, third place other than America so that we can continue to properly vet folks before they come into America. And I suggest we do need to properly vet them. But I also suggest, Mr. President, that number one, um, this is about, it's about right and wrong. Uh, the, these people helped Americans, and they helped American troops, and we owe them. And we don't want to see them massacred. And number two, if we allow them to be massacred, I think it's going to send a message to, to many people throughout the world that uh, loyalty to America means nothing. Absolutely nothing. So in a nutshell, this... Uh, this bill would ask our Defense Department and our State Department in the next 30 days to give a plan to Congress to uh, properly vet and allow any of these 18,000 interpreters and their families who helped uh, American troops come to America. And with that, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of S-2216, which was introduced earlier today. Further, I ask unanimous consent, Mr. President, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, 
and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator from Kentucky. Reserving the right to object. In the first few decades after the Revolutionary War, America was under siege. Our capital was ransacked. But I don't recall in reading history that any of our founding fathers said that they would flee the country or leave and give up on the quest for liberty. The quest for liberty requires fighting by the people who have been given their liberty, the people who we have helped to get their liberty. You can say the people in Afghanistan helped us, or you can also say we helped liberate them as well. They've been free for 20 years. It seems like it might precipitate the overcoming of the Taliban if you take 18,000 of the most westernized, those who speak English, and you say, flee, 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 the end is coming. Well, guess what? The end comes quicker if they all leave. So I would encourage them rather to stay and fight. I think it would be good to have many English speakers in Afghanistan. The future of Afghanistan could be a bright future, but they're going to have to fight for it. And ultimately, it is their fight. And if we offer easy escape and easy plans to leave the country, we are assuring the defeat of the people who are our friends in Afghanistan. So I object to this uh, piece of legislation. Mr. President. Objection is heard. Mr. Senator President. from Louisiana. Mr. President, I, I respect my colleague, and I certainly respect his right to object. Um, I disagree. We're all aware of what's going on in Afghanistan. The Afghan government is in a bitter fight to the end with the Taliban, and the Taliban's winning, and the Taliban is ruthless, and they're going to murder these people. They're going to murder them, and the blood's going to be on American hands if we don't do something to help them. My, my, my proposal would not have required any of these 18,000 Afghans who stood with American troops to beat back the Taliban and to beat back ISIS. They stood with us at their own risk, at the risk of their own kids and their own spouses. And we decided to leave. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I have my own opinions, but that's not what this bill is about. And we owe it to these 18,000 people to offer them a chance to live. And if we don't do something, they're going to be butchered. They're going to be gutted like a deer. Like a deer. And the blood's going to be on American hands. And the whole world is going to take notice. There's right and wrong in this world. There's politics. There's a time for it. But there's a time to do the right thing. And the right thing is to help save these human lives who fought for America and their families and their children. I suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Baldwin.